Now, quite a bit of the literature that's coming out on COVID-19 is not peer-reviewed at the moment. And this is because the peer review process takes a bit of time. And this is an example of a paper that's not peer-reviewed. But it still has quite a lot of academic credibility. And it's called The Novel Coronavirus 2019. It's highly contagious and more infectious than initial estimates. So it is a little surprising how quickly this virus has travelled around the world, the COVID-19 virus. And this paper helps us to explain that. But more importantly than that, it gives us some practical ideas for reducing the speed of spread. And this comes from a group of academics at the National Laboratory in uh, Los Alamos, which, of course, is famous for <laughs> for other reasons. Um, it's, where, it's where the nuclear first nuclear bomb was developed. Um, now, it starts off with a good review, actually. I think we'll maybe just take the time to go through this because it's interesting. Um, now, the end of December 2019, 41 cases of pneumonia of unknown etiology. That's the American spelling, of course. It's an American paper, so we're stuck with the American spelling were reported by the Wuhan Municipal Health Authority. So um, pneumonia of unknown etiology. So this was like a new type of ammonia that didn't seem to fit any of the existing categories. It was consistent with known types of viral pneumonias, but it was basically an unknown new type of pneumonia. Now, January the 1st, 2020, uh, the Hunan uh, seafood whole, whole field market, wholesale market in Wuhan was closed. Now, this market, you'll know if you watch previous videos, but th th these, this is one of these Chinese markets where they sell living and dead animals. They uh, slaughter animals um, on site and they also sell um, wild animals that have been captured for food. So you can buy bits of snakes and fish and all sorts of things. And there are also things that we use uh, that are used in Chinese medicine. So uh, not, not, not good to Western uh, tastes at all and, uh, and very bad from this disease catching point of view because the virus is zoonotic. It's come from animals. But that was suspected as being like an epicenter for this infection. And it's now basically believe that this was the epicenter where this spillover infection came from from uh, animals into humans for this zo zoonotic infection. Now January the 8th the China Centre for Disease, Disease Control identifies this new virus and at that time they called it 2019 novel coronavirus. January the 15th China Centre for Disease Control upgrade to emergency response level one the highest response uh, on evidence of human to human transfer so at this time they started to realize so it's taken like this was the end of december and human to human transfer is recognized by the uh, the 15th the tragic thing is that evidence put forward by local medical staff at around this time was suppressed by the local authorities um that was that was terrible tragic now 15th of january they upgraded it so so human to human transmission demonstrated them and january 21st 2019 novel coronavirus inspection infection had spread to most other parts of china so it had spread basically pretty quickly january the 23rd uh, the city of wuhan was locked down people weren't allowed in or out because they realised that the epidemic was spreading from that city of Wuhan in Hubei province. And really the timing couldn't have been worse because this was right in the middle of the Chinese New Year festival, the Spring Festival or the, or the New Moon Festival. And um, it's the biggest holiday in China, so there was a lot of coming and going. Now, the 30th of January, the World Health Organization uh, declared... Uh, the outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern. They're the words they use. That was the 30th of January. Now at this time, the R naught was estimated to be 2.2. Now what this means is, 
So if we imagine that initially there was one person who had this uh, infection, then the R naught is the average number of people that one person infects. So if the R naught is two, then that one person would infect two more people. But then each of these people would infect two people in turn. And then of course each of these could infect two. Like this. So on average we see there that each person is infecting two people. So this person infected two people. That person infected two people. That person infected two people. That's the way uh, it goes. That would be an R naught of two, and this is an average of the, estimate, uh, the the average estimated transmissibility of the virus. How transmissible it is. So clearly, if R naught was three, then one person could go on and infect three people, and then each of those could infect three on average and then each of those would infect on average three more so you can see there the epidemic is going to grow much more quickly so this R naught figure this average figure of how quickly the disease spreads is really quite important to mapping an epidemic and predicting the course of an epidemic now the initial estimates of the R naught were 2.2 around about 2.2 and, and and that represents a doubling time of six to seven days i think that's meant to be two point about 2.6 so around about the 2.5 mark really that that would be a doubling time between six and seven days that was the initial estimate but what this group have done in uh, this los alamos group they're a group of uh, mathematical uh, modelers um, very high reputation mathematical centre and um, they have done a reanalysis of the data up to the 5th of February and the number of infected individuals during the early epidemic they estimate doubled every 2.4 days so when they looked back at the data and they had more complete data than the people had originally who calculated these lower R noughts in the twos they collected more data, they collected um, a lot of individual sample pieces of data for, from the epidemic area. They used epidemiological principles and they used mathematical modelling. And their R0 came out at 4.7, between 4.7 and 6. So what they're saying was, in the initial stages of the epidemic, the growth in the number of cases was much higher than had originally been estimated. And from this, they concluded that because the... See, see what this means is, if, if, if the r noughts were 4.7 to 6.6 in the early stages of the epidemic, that means that the characteristics of this virus can generate r noughts of those values. This virus has the the capacity to double in capacity or double in the number of people affected every 2.4 days, giving these R noughts of 4.7 to 6.6. .6. So if the R naught is 6, on average each infected person is infecting 6 more people. So it's going to spread much more quickly. And they concluded from this that strong control measures were needed to stop transmission of the virus. So that's interesting because what this means is, you see, the R0 is not intrinsic to the nature of the virus. The R0 is an average figure of the actual spread that took place. So this is a retrospective analysis that gave rise to these, to these figures looking back. And because the R0 is not intrinsic to the nature of the virus, it depends on the nature of the virus, but it also depends on the control measures that are taken. So if good control measures are taken, it's going to spread less quickly and the R0 will go down. If, as in the early stages of this epidemic, it wasn't taken seriously and there was no effective control measures, then the R0 is going to go up. So that was the conclusion that they made. 
But also looking at this data mathematically from a retrospective point of view, they came up with some other interesting points. So time from initial exposure to symptom onset. So initial exposure to the organism, to the virus, to onset of symptoms, they, uh, their, their figure was 4.2 uh, 4 days on average. Um, that, that was the average figure, 3.5 to uh, 1 to 1 days the average incubation period. Now, we, we know the incubation period can be less. We know it can be a lot more. Two to 14 days is still what we're saying. But they were saying that most people were around about the, the four to five day mark in incubation period. And then they looked at the um, onset of symptoms to hospitalization. And what they found here was that before January, the 18th, the average time from symptom onset to a patient needing to be hospitalised, symptom onset time to hospitalisation, the average figure there was 5.5 days. And after January, it went down to 1.5 days. So there's a massive difference there. And this P value is, is less than 0 0.001, means their results um, are almost certainly genuine and didn't arise by chance. Now, what's probably happening here is more people were becoming aware of the virus after January the 18th. So they knew that they were sick with this virus, so they were reporting for hospital care. So it's probably a difference in public awareness there, rather than an actual change to the evolution of the condition and how when, and the amount of time it takes for serious symptoms to develop. And the other interesting thing they found was time from initial hospital uh, admission to discharge they found was 11.5 days on average, ranging from 8 to 17.3. Most cases were... This, what this means is most cases were falling within this range. I think 95% of cases fell within this range. But that gave an average of 11.5 days hospital time. And what they also found was uh, the time from initial hospital admission to death of those people that died again 95 percent of cases fell in between 8.7 and 14.9 days but the average there was 11.2 days and they concluded that control efforts have a measurable effect on rate of spread and we've actually seen this in china so the rate of spread was relatively high and then yesterday you might have heard me reading that letter out for someone in a, in um in um not peking what's it called now beijing <laughs> in in beijing and um they said that the city is basically closed down all of china is is pretty well closed down um, to a lot of coming and going in normal daily life and this has reduced social interaction and of course this has massively reduced the r naught the spread has been greatly slowed down but then um, maybe later on today we'll look at the situation in, in Iran where there's no close down at all and therefore we would expect the spread to be much more rapid. So the moral of this story is that control measures can make a huge difference to the rate of spread. So that's just some data to give evidence for that, for that contention. Control measures are absolutely essential all over the world and as I've said many times we are in the early stages of a pandemic now and these control measures do need to be implemented anywhere there's any evidence of the virus. For example this is beginning to happen in Italy although unfortunately there has still been spread to I believe Sicily and uh, places in southern Italy as well from the north but uh, uh, the best the, the best defence we have at the moment is slowing this down, containing it and hoping that we can delay the onset of the pandemic till we are more prepared, hopefully with a vaccine, hopefully with drugs, hopefully with better control measures ready to implement.